Um, slight change of pace now. Ben Kentish, LBC's Westminster editor, is in the studio. And you have been beavering away, Ben. James, uh, indeed. And I can tell you this morning or this afternoon that the Deputy Prime Minister, Oliver Dowden, is today accused of misleading Parliament over a claim that he made covering for his boss, Rishi Sunak, at Prime Minister's Questions last month that seems, from all our investigations, to be pretty much baseless. Here's what he said. What do we have from the party opposite? Plans for an unfunded £28 billion spending spree. And what would that do? Drive up borrowing, push up interest rates, adding £1,000 to everyone's mortgage. Mr Speaker, I know they're out of touch, but even she must realise that Britain cannot afford Labour. What you heard there, James, yeah. Deputy Prime Minister Oliver Dowden claiming that Labour's plans to invest £28 billion a year in green energy would add £1,000 mm. a year to everyone's mortgages. Now, that's a big claim. It's very difficult to work out how any policy will have an impact on interest rates because, of course, interest rates are set independently of government. And it's even more difficult. In fact, it's virtually impossible to put a specific figure on it. And yet, as you just heard, that's exactly what Oliver Dowden did. So where does that figure, where does that claim come from? Well, the day before that session of PMQs, at the start of June, the Daily Mail ran a story on that very figure stating that it had been the conclusion of what they called treasury analysis. Oh, treasury analysis. Treasury analysis. analysis. You okay, might think then. that sounds very credible, James. You mm. might sound, you think it sounds very official, and indeed it does. And it's not unusual for treasury civil servants to analyse the impact of opposition policies in that way. It wouldn't be surprising if they had. The problem here is they didn't. Pardon? They hadn't. The Treasury admitted to me that it made no such official analysis of that Labour policy. And it's not just us that's been asking questions. The UK statistics watchdog has also been demanding answers after becoming concerned about that figure and where it came from. And in response to them too, the Treasury admitted, uh, and I quote directly, that the figure quoted is not based on any analysis produced by Treasury officials. In fact, oh. despite inve investigating this, the UK Statistics Authority told me they'd been unable to establish any official source for it at all. So the Treasury analysis, quoted by Oliver Dowden as fact in the House of Commons, wasn't actually produced by Treasury officials, James. Where did it come from? You might well, who, well wonder. Who gave it to the Daily Mail? Or who gave it to the Daily Mail? Let's get into that. It seems that rather than being any sort of official analysis at all, despite being reported as such, the figure was actually produced by Jeremy Hunt, the Chancellor's political advisers. One source telling me the SPAD, special advisers, got their heads together and briefed it out. So an apparently pretty much baseless statistic has been seemingly pulled from the air by Conservative Party advisers, passed off as some sort of independent and official Treasury research, when it's nothing of the sort, and then repeated by the Deputy Prime Minister at Prime Minister's questions. That's a pretty serious matter. The Ministerial Code, James, is very clear in saying <laughs> it is of paramount importance that ministers give accurate and truthful information to Parliament correcting any inadvertent error at the earliest opportunity. And that is exactly what Labour is now demanding that Oliver Dowden do. Angela Rayner, the party's deputy leader, of course, telling me that Oliver Dowden, she says, has been caught out misleading Parliament trying to pass off baseless claims and desperate scaremongering as official Treasury analysis. She says he must now urgently correct the record in line with his obligations under the Ministerial Code and says the Tories should have realised by now that misleading Parliament is a serious matter, but it appears, she claims, that they'll never apologise, never learn and never change. And my understanding uh, from talking to his team, James, is that Oliver Dowden, for now at least, seems unlikely to be apologising. A source close to him telling me that borrowing on that scale would mean interest rates rise further and stay higher for longer, and that any mortgage calculator would show what that would mean for the average mortgage. But the Treasury has effectively rejected the figure. The UK Statistics Authority, uh, James, says there's no source for the figure. I strongly suspect that we won't be hearing that claim ever again. Fake news. Couldn't possibly comment. Well, it's it's a fi it's certainly it's baseless. Could, I mean, if, if you were Oliver Dowden, could you? How much of this could you lay at the feet of the Daily Mail? 
Not that a politically well, ambitious if, if, conservative politician is ever really going to finger the Daily Mail for anything, but could he say, I'm sorry, I read it in the Daily Mail. I if you're the was... Deputy Prime Minister and you choose to quote a figure as fact in the House of Commons yeah. as a Treasury analysis... Did he use the phrase Treasury analysis? He didn't use the phrase no, Treasury analysis. But he got but it from the he previous got it from the Daily Mail. Mail. Then it is ultimately... It's on ministers to make sure that the information that they provide to Parliament is hmm. accurate. I mean, no suggestion, of course, that Oliver Dowd knew it wasn't or that he lied or anything like well, that. Could have it checked. was intentional. He could have That's made a phone call, couldn't he? he he said, hey, I've got this stuff from the Daily Mail. Can I speak to the people who did the Treasury analysis, please, before I do PMQs this afternoon? The, and they'd have the, gone, well, that's a bit awkward. Ollie. The ministerial code is very clear that it is the obligation of ministers to make sure that everything they say is factually correct. And if it's not, as it seems in this case it wasn't, then their duty is to uh, correct the record as soon as possible. I, I'm, I'm told that since you started talking, Simon Case at the Cabinet Office has conducted an inquiry that has completely exonerated <laughs> Oliver Dowden. Just in the last 43 seconds. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts, there we go. isn't it? You've got the official statistics, watchdog, and the facts. On the one hand, as the independent inquiry into Sue Gray <laughs> also had, and then you've got Simon Case's cabinet comedy uh, on the other, coming up with completely different conclusions. Ben Kentish, many thanks indeed.